My name is James Sendal. I'm Professor of Urological Surgery in the University of Aberdeen. I'm also Chairman of the EAU Guidelines Office Board. Well, firstly, I am delighted to chair um, that session this morning on prostate cancer management, where there isn't good evidence. It's a fascinating topic because, as you know, already we know in the guidelines that 90% of what is published is not worthy of being included in guideline recommendations. So we are existing in an environment where the evidence is weak, and the question is, how do we cope with that despite the fact we must improve patient outcomes. I saw this session um, in terms of the gaps in evidence to be terribly important because we saw presentations across the spectrum of prostate cancer care from diagnosis um, through to new digital um, pathology technologies all the way through to surgery for recurrent disease and we saw the challenges with the evidence in some, in some cases where, for example, in salvage prostatectomy, you find that not that many patients are getting through to trials and not that many patients are being offered that treatment anyway. So some of the problems were highlighted because you cannot have good studies when patients are not actually having the treatments. But also, the session ended extremely well with Lawrence Collette telling us from a scientific statistical perspective, the opportunities for filling those gaps that ranges from randomized trials all the way to big data. For example, now we've got big data in prostate cancer with Pioneer, which is an EU funded um, big data project for 12 million euro, where we have 32 stakeholders, both from universities and also from industry, on a neutral platform, harmonizing data from across the world to learn new insights as to how we may diagnose prostate cancer patients better, but importantly, how we treat them better and predict their outcomes better. We heard today some great presentations from studies regarding um, high-tech radiotherapy technologies, for example. So there are always new technologies, but our responsibility as scientists, as clinicians, is to ensure that not only do we bring new technology to market, but that they are tested properly with the best science so that we don't have technologies coming in without good enough evidence. So for us, we saw this as an opportunity to share those thoughts, but also during, during AMOC we heard that there were consensus meetings between ESMO and the EAU and et cetera, where in the absence of high quality scientific evidence, we bring experts from across the world to share knowledge and to reach consensus about the most burning gaps that we have in the evidence. The headlines are, the two major consensus meetings that um, have happened uh, uh, at EMAC 18, where we had yesterday ESMO and EAU um, leading a consensus on bladder cancer treatments, etc. That was a fantastic success. And I think just the fact that these two big organizations could come to a neutral platform and share knowledge for the benefit of patients was an amazing feat. And today, we have a similar consensus on active surveillance in prostate cancer, which will again be a formidable effort. To this day, we are still not very good at predicting which patients should be treated and which should not be treated. And for those who are treated, we're not terribly good at predicting which patients should have specific treatments that give them the best outcomes. I think until we can predict those, we're still going to be failing our patients. I think the, the, the biggest lesson we had from this session this morning, for example, is drawing our attention to the fact that we can do these studies. No longer should surgeons say doing randomized trials are not possible. They are possible. So I would imagine that would be my big take-home message for, for surgeons.